Hello, so today I'm going to be walking you through a beginner scratch project. In this project, we'll be creating a very simple winter animation. So to do that, I'm first going to show you the animation and then I'll walk you through step by step. You will need to have an open and brand new workspace on Scratch. If you have an account, you can log into that account now. Otherwise, you can just use the workspace as it is. If you want to save your work and work on it later, you will need to create an account. So to get started, I'm going to show you, we're going to just hit the green flag and check out the animation. So it's very beginner friendly, very simple, very easy to add on to. So you can see the snowflakes coming down and then we change to a happy holiday sign. So that's what we're going to get started with today. And during this video at any time, please feel free to stop the video, pause it, work through the steps and then jump back in when you're ready. If you are a little bit more experienced with Scratch, you can use this tutorial as a base to build upon your winter kind of animation and make it a little bit more interactive. So to get started, go ahead and go to your open Scratch workspace. We're going to come to the right hand side of our screen where you see the yellow cat. Go ahead and click the trash can to remove the cat. And we're going to come down where you see the cat face, select it. And for this, I'm going to be using Snowflake. So I'm just going to type it in there. And now it's going to appear in my sprite box. I'm going to also be using two additional sprites, the snowman and the reindeer. So you, can, you are welcome to use these as well. You can also use different winter characters or any other character that you'd like for this animation. So coming back to this, the cat, I will now add my snowman. And then I'll add the reindeer. Perfect. And so before we move on even further to paint our new sprite, we're going to add our backdrop. So it's still in the sprite area right next to the cat face. You should see a little photo that looks like a landscape. It says select or choose a backdrop. Go ahead and open that up. And you can use any backdrop that you like for this demo. I'll be using winter. Perfect. And so now we're going to create a brand new sprite, which is going to be our sign that's going to pop up. So from the cat space, we're going to hover on top until you come to the bubble that says paint. It's like a little paintbrush. Go ahead and select it. And it's going to open up a whole new workspace under costumes where you can create your own Sprite. So for me, as you saw, and I'll show you again, I just made a very simple banner that says Happy Holidays 2020. And so that's something that you can recreate or you can make it say anything else. If there's a particular um, like celebration that you, you do with your friends and family and you want to put that as your banner, you can do that. But if not, you can just keep it very open in general to say Happy Holidays. So for that, I'm going to be finding a nice bluish color because for me that's like wintry with the snow and I'm going to make my sign. So take some time here to really just make your sign or your banner however you want. Make it look really nice, really cool, really fun. And just really experiment with the different painting tools. And then I'm going to add some text there. My text might be a little too big, so I need to make it a little smaller so it all fits there. Perfect, kind of. There we go. So you can play around with it, make sure it works for, for you. Okay, and I'm gonna add another text box with my 2020. And let's put that, say, about here. And we can always come back if we need to edit anything. So when you're all ready and you have it set up, go back to your code bubble, and now you should be open with your sprite box ready to code. So let's have our snowflake selected. 
and we're going to begin our first block of code. So we have three blocks of code on the snowflake. The first one is going to create a loop of the snowflake to allow it to duplicate or create a clone of itself. So a loop is kind of a little bo a bowl, say it's a bowl, and you put different conditions in it, the things are gonna keep running and rolling until you tell it to do something different. So we're gonna tell this loop to keep rolling, making new clones, which essentially it will duplicate the snowflakes. So you don't have to keep duplicating the snowflakes in general with the sprites, we can just have it do it on its own. So to start, we're gonna go grab an events block. It's gonna be a yellow bubble on your left-hand side in the coding section. We're gonna pull out a when flag clicked. Next, we're gonna create a hide or to allow the snowflakes to slightly pause or disappear at the beginning of the animation. And to do that, we're gonna to go to our purple looks. We're gonna scroll down till we see a hide and pull that right underneath. Next, we're gonna make our loop. So go to the orange control. We'll grab a forever loop. So that means it's gonna keep on running until we tell it to stop. And now we need to create the clone. So while we're in here, we're gonna grab a weight, put it inside the mouth of the loop. Now I'm gonna change that one to a 1.5. And now I'm gonna add my clone. So still within our control section, scroll down, you'll see create clone of myself. And that's gonna finish off that loop. So within this first code block, we have a win flat clicked, a hide block, a forever loop that will allow conditions to run, a wait that will allow our snowflakes to pause, before they're cloned, and then a clone. So that is the first block of code. The second block is gonna to be to tell the clone to do something once it's cloned. So now it's a clone, it's like, now what's gonna happen? So now we're gonna tell it to move down the screen. So still in our orange control, we're gonna pull out an event called when I start as a clone. Next, we're gonna to go to the looks section, grab a show. So now they are hidden. Now we need them to show and appear as they start to come down the screen. And we wanna give them movement. So to do that, we're gonna use our blue motion. We're gonna to glide to, so glide is more of a smoother action versus a move, which will kind of allow it to jump. We want it to kind of glide down as if it was really snowing. So we're gonna do a glide one second to X and Y. And I'm gonna change the one second to two, just to give it a little bit more of a smooth transition. And in the X position, I'm actually gonna allow it to pick randomly where it wants to go down our X axis. So to do that, we're gonna to go to our green operators. It's gonna say pick random, and I'm gonna put it in my X position. And I'm gonna change the number to along the X line to negative 200 and positive 200. And I'm gonna make my Y negative 250, okay? And so what that is, the X and Y, X is gonna run left and right on our screen, our Y is gonna run up and down on our screen. So when we start as a clone, we're telling our snowflake what parameters to stay within. Next, we're gonna create another loop, a repeat until loop. So to use that loop, we're gonna go to our orange control, grab a repeat until, and we're gonna put that right underneath our glide. So there's a little open bubble next to that. Now we're gonna tell our loop, what is it gonna do until when? So we're gonna do it until our X and our Y position meet in a certain place. So to do that, we're gonna go back to our orange operators. We're going to grab our less than sign and put that in that space. So that means you want the one where if you got your left hand and opened it up, the pointy side, is going to the left, that's the operator you want. Next, we're gonna grab a Y position. So we're gonna to come to our blue motion, scroll down until you see one that says Y position. And we're gonna put that in our first bubble. So repeat until Y position. And then in the open space, we're gonna change that number to 250. Next, we're gonna set the speed. So the speed is gonna allow the snowflake to move at a certain speed. 
So you can alter this and play around with it and change it as you'd like, but for this demo, you can totally start with the one that I give you and see if you like it. So we're gonna go to, we're gonna stay on our blue motion first, and we're gonna find change Y by. And we're gonna put that into the mouth of the loop. So now we're gonna grab the speed, as I mentioned. So go to your orange variables. We're going to make a variable. We're gonna name it speed. We're gonna click for this sprite only because we only want it to apply to our snowflake, not our snowman, ranger, or the custom one we've created. And we're gonna grab that speed and we're going to put it inside. So change Y by speed. And that is gonna be our second block of code. So once you're ready with that, and again, please feel free to pause this video as I am just kind of rolling through each block. If you need a little bit more time, just pause and take your time to find them. Or if you're adding extra code or custom code, you can do that as well and jump back in when you're ready. So the last block of code is going to determine our speed for them, for the snowflakes. So to do that, we're gonna do a win flat clicked. So going to our events, grab a win flat clicked. Next, we're gonna set our speed. So going to your orange variables, set, pull out, it's gonna say my variable. We're gonna change that to speed. And I'm starting mine at six. I kind of like the speed of six, but again, you are more than welcome to play around with that. And for our last block, we're going to hide this variable up here. So as you can see, it says the snowflake speed, but I don't want it to say that. I just want it to kind of show our animation. So I'm going to click speed from the drop-down menu, and then now we can run it. And as you see, as I started, it disappeared. So you don't have that at the beginning. Okay. But, okay, so now we ran it and we tested our code to see if our speed was disappearing and it is, so that's perfect. So now we wanna do our code on our sprite. Well, mine is named sprite one, but it's the custom backdrop that you created. So let's go to our events and we're gonna do when flat clicked. We're gonna to come to our purple looks and we're gonna grab a hide because we want it to hide at the beginning of the animation because right now it's covering up everything else. So we want it to hide. We're gonna pull out a weight to make it pause. So that's gonna be in the orange control. We grab a weight. And here you're gonna have, if you're copying mine, you can have the same one I have, which is nine seconds. Otherwise you can, if you want it to delay or you're adding extra characters or extra animation, it might be a little bit longer. So just kind of play around with that. And finally, we're gonna go back to our purple looks and we're gonna put show. And so right now we're gonna, I'm gonna click hide on there just to hide it. And I'm gonna set my snowman and reindeer as I want them to be. So I want my snowman to kind of hang out here and I want my reindeer to hang out here. And that's where I want mine to be. So now you can go through and run your code and I'll pop it back up there for your custom sprite. It's very simple. When flag clicked, we will cause it to hide. It will wait hiding for nine seconds and then it'll show. For the snowflake, we have our three different blocks. We have the first one, which is when flat clicked, hide, our forever loop, in the mouth of the loop, we have our wait 1.5 seconds, create a clone of myself, and the second block of code is going to control the clones. So when I start as a clone, show, lie two seconds to X, which is going to pick random between negative 200 and positive 200, and our Y, which is gonna be negative 250. Our repeat until loop is going to show our x our y position at 250, and it'll change our y by speed. And to create that speed, we have another block, our last block, our win flat click, set our speed to six, and then hide variable from the workspace. So I encourage you to take some extra code challenges after you finish this base code. Maybe you can see if you can add some animation or some movement to your characters. Maybe one character goes to the other, maybe they go to the back of the screen, maybe they even interact and have some dialogue. So have some fun with this project and I hope you have a great time.